Welcome grade fours to WorksheetCloud.com's online lessons. It's me, Miss Nicole Frank, coming to you after a long weekend, which I hope that you've rested through and you've got some well-needed um, leisure time, you read a book, or you practice your talents like we spoke before. Um, but for this lesson, we are now going to get into working and learning, and I hope that you are ready. If you have any questions, if you have any questions, grade forwards, please send us an email to grade four at worksheetcloud.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can after this lesson. So today's lesson we're going to be looking at conjunctions. Let us just go back there. We are going to be looking at conjunctions and how they function in a sentence, okay? So conjunctions can be a little bit complicated. So we're just going to go through the basics today. Let's look at our lesson outline. So our lesson outline for today is we're going to be doing our usual sentence today. And then um, what are conjunctions, the types of conjunctions. And then we're going to see how we can use an activity and how we can use conjunctions in a sentence. So like I said, conjunctions can be pretty complicated because you need to know a few things before we jump into conjunctions. So that's what we're going to do after a sentence today. So, a sentence a day. Sophia glided softly over the green grass. Analyze the sentence. What do you notice about it? Um... Grade 4 is we've done quite a few lessons prior to this one. So the reason I'm putting this sentence on there and I wanted to analyze it is because I wanted to take all the knowledge that we've previously learned and to look at the sentence and to see if you can tell me or at least think about things that you notice in this particular sentence. And I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that. So the thing that I'm hoping that you notice is that there is a figure of speech in the sentence, okay? And the figure of speech that we're using is alliteration. So that's what I was hoping you were going to pick up when you read that sentence. So I'm going to take my pen out now quickly so that we can just look at this together. So as you can see, Sophia glided softly over the green grass. Green grass clear indication of alliteration because we are using a consonant at the beginning of our words to show repetition green grass and we can even include our word glided over here because it's closely related to the other words green grass so it's trying to create this image in your mind grade fours to see how sophia glides across the grass i could have said sophia walked on the grass but that wouldn't have created an image or something visual for you to see, okay? And that's what, what figures of speech, what they do. They create an image. And I want you to think about that every time you see a sentence or when you write a sentence for yourself. Now I'd like you to break them up to, into its parts of speech. I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that. Sophia glided softly over the green grass. I'm moving over here so that you have, I can have some space to show you the parts of speech when you are done. Okay, so the parts of speech are as follows. Sophia glided softly over the green grass. And here are my parts of speech. There's a proper noun, an, a verb, an adverb, preposition, definite article, adjective, and common noun. So, 
like I like to do is I'm going to draw my oops that does not make sense at all grade fours um glided is my verb and I need to make sure that I get it from the word glided okay because that indicates the action of the sentence Softly tells me more about the word about the word glided because softly is indicating um, describing the verb. So it's telling me more about the verb and it's an adverb. Okay, over is a preposition. The definite article green is describing the grass and it's an adjective and then grass is my common noun. Well done, grade fours. Let's move on. What are conjunctions? A conjunction is the glue. I use the word glue because I want you to get the understanding that a conjunction puts two things together. It holds two words, two phrases or clauses together. Both dependent and independent clauses. Now some of you are thinking, what is an independent and dependent clause? Now remember in my introduction I said to you that you have to remember some things before we can really get into conjunctions. So that is what I was talking about. Learning about clauses and different phrases and words and how conjunctions fit into place. So I'm just going to give you basic examples of conjunctions now. For example, the girl wrote her test. She passed. Those are two different sentences. The girl wrote her test. She passed. Okay? And I can join the, these two sentences by using a conjunction. The girl wrote her test and she passed. Okay? That is joining the two sentences together. But conjunctions can also join two ideas or two concepts together. For example, the girl and the boy walked home. The word and in the sentence is also regarded as a conjunction. So that's important for you to note, grade fours, that conjunctions don't only join phrases or clauses together, they also can join words together. So, dependent and independent clauses. I had to get out of your way there, grade fours. So, what are dependent and independent clauses? Well, a clause conveys a single idea. They contain a finite verb. Now, early in one of our earlier lessons, we discussed the infinitive, which has the word to in front of it. And the finite verb is a verb that can stand on its own. So, an independent clause is also called the main clause, which is the main idea of the sentence. It's able to stand on its own. It's able to stand on its own and make complete sense. She drove her car. So there's a finite verb over there, dro drove. Okay, her finite verb over there, drove. And it makes complete sense on its own. It doesn't need anything to add into that sentence for me to understand what it's trying to say. So that is a main clause or an independent clause. A dependent clause is also known as a subordinating clause. Always contains a verb, but cannot stand on its own, or cannot stand alone. Depends on the independent clause for its meaning. So without the independent clause, the dependent clause does not make sense. So that's the difference between the two clauses, grade fours. The independent clause, or the main clause, can stand on its own, she drove her car. Right, but the dependent clause cannot stand on its own, it will need some extra help from the independent clause to make sense. Types of conjunctions there are three different kinds of conjunctions coordinating, 
subordinating and correlative, each serving its own distinctive purpose, but all working to bring words or sentences together. What's important to note with this grade fours is that each of these different kinds of conjunctions has a different purpose in the sentence. And because there are different kinds of conjunctions, it is important to, when you are trying to identify them, to understand what the purpose in the sentence is. So the first one that we're going to look at is coordinating conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions join two words or ideas of equal weight. For example, fish and chips. So the word and is a coordinating conjunction. Tired but happy. So you can see that the word but is a coordinating conjunction. He completed the test and pass. Okay, so they are joining two ideas or words of equal weight. Subordinating conjunctions. Subordinating conjunctions join a main clause to a subordinate clause. Now remember in the beginning of this lesson grade four, I try to help you identify the different clauses the main clause and the subordinate clause. So subordinating conjunctions means that you will have a main clause with a main idea and a subordinating clause that cannot stand on its own without the main clause. For example, they played soccer although a storm was coming. So what do I mean when I say that the one Part of the sentence or the one sentence would not be able to stand on its own. For example, though, if I had to separate this now. And let's do this together. So, they played soccer could be a sentence on its own. Right? They played soccer. And that sentence would make complete sense. But if I had to say a storm was coming, it needs to relate to they played soccer. And yeah, I see there's a mistake there. So let's just put that there. They played soccer. It needs to relate to the sentence that the main sentence to kind of make sense in this particular context. You may, go, you may not go to the shops unless you wear a mask. Okay, so the word you wear a mask unless you wear a mask relates to the main clause of this particular sentence that they may not go to the shops unless, of course, they wear a mask. So the word unless over here would be the conjunction. And the word although in the sentence would be the conjunction. Relative pronouns as conjunctions. Now, grade four is in one of our previous lessons, we focused on pronouns. And relative pronouns were one of the types of pronouns that we had. And in that lesson, we discussed how relative pronouns can also be used as a conjunction. And again, yes, it can become a little bit complicated and confusing. But what you need to do is to find the purpose of the word in the sentence. Relative pronouns also perform the functions of conjunctions. For example, who, whom, whose. They refer to people. That, which, and what refer to animals and inanimate objects. So when you see these words in a sentence, you can now know that they can be either regarded as a conjunction which would be correct because they are joining two words or two ideas or two sentences or relative pronouns, okay? Because they're either referring to people or animals or inanimate objects. And remember, pronouns replaces nouns in a sentence. 
So now we're going to look at using conjunctions, okay, in a sentence. And what's important, grade fours, is practice. Because when we don't practice something, it's going to get a bit more difficult. So it's important for us to look at sentences and see how they are joined together, how the words are joined together, and to be able to identify the different conjunctions. So what I've done is I've included an activity on conjunctions, obviously after this lesson. But in this activity that we're going to do together, I've decided to give you two sentences and we are going to think of the correct conjunction to go into that sentence and to look at now the sentence structure after we've used the conjunction. He smiles, he won the lottery. Great forwards, I'm going to leave this on for a little bit so that you can try and figure out which conjunction you think or which word you think would join these um, sentences together and how you would change the punctuation. I'll give you a few moments. Right. He smiled because he won the lottery. I hope you got that great forward. And the word because we added into the sentence to join those two words together. And as you can see, before the word because, I added a comma. Okay. He smiled because he won the lottery. And remember, we are giving a reason for why he smiled. So that is why you need to read the sentence carefully to see what the function of that word must be in the sentence. So even when I look at he smiled, I can see that that can stand on its own. But why did he smile? He won the lottery. So the word because tells us why, okay? And then let's look at another example. Nicole needed to keep busy. She was very tired. Now, as you can see, the she was very tired depends on the first part of the um, these two sentences, the first sentence, because you don't know why Nicole was tired or Nicole needed to keep, keep busy or what the situation is. So here you can see this is a good example for you to see how one sentence needs to um, depend on the other sentence. And another part of conjunctions that's important, grade fours, is that a conjunction can be placed in the beginning of a sentence. So you need to watch out for that. And the conjunctions that like to do this and confuse you a little bit is the word if, unless, and although, because they can go in the beginning of the sentence and, and still join the sentences. I know it doesn't sound um, it sounds a bit confusing now, but you'll see now when I put the example up. So Nicole needed to keep busy. She was very tired. Although Nicole needed to keep busy, she was very tired. So here we have a sentence with the conjunctions now in the beginning, still joining the two sentences. Sentences. So here we're saying, although Nicole needed to keep busy, she needs to keep busy, she was tired. So the word although joined these two sentences and yes, it's in the front of the sentence. And again, the one sentence she was tired depends on the, the other part of the sentence, the clause now, Nicole needed to keep busy. I hope that makes sense. We will be going into more detail on, on conjunctions in another lesson, grade fours, because I feel conjunctions is something that can become a little bit complicated, like I said numerous times during this lesson. So for now, I just want you to know the basics of conjunctions, how to identify them, how to identify them, how to, um, how to, the different types of conjunctions, and in our next lesson, we'll look at how to use them in the different sentences 
and the different types of conjunctions. Grade 4, remember if you have any questions or concerns about this lesson, you can send them to grade 4 at worksheetcloud.com. And an activity is provided for you after this lesson, so please do it so that you can get into the habit of understanding the types of conjunctions and um, also to be, be able to identify them. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, grade 4. It was a pleasure teaching you as usual. From me, with Nicole Frank, have a wonderful day further. Goodbye.